If you've ever fired a suppressed weapon and you tried not to cry in front of your bros due to the gas blowback, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is a dystopian wasteland of hell and fire and brimstone. And please get in there and make me proud. <laughs> if you guys want to support the channel, we have Gun Mag Warehouse. Uh, they help us out monetarily, buy magazines from them. They're pretty cool. We also have LEX Ammunition. 5% off with them, and Vertex, 25% off for sick plaid and other things. Gentlemen, we have gone through that, and ladies, there are some ladies out there, uh, God help them. Today we're going to be talking about the Sons of Liberty Gunworks uh, M4 EXO2, if I'm not mistaken. So, before we get into this particular review, it is an AR-15, uh, what is my relationship to the company? Well, um, they contacted me, they wanted me to review a rifle which I happily do. Uh, so my terms are always rifle and ammunition for me to do a review. And that's pretty centered, so that is what they have provided. So we have done 5,000 rounds on this particular rifle, upper and lower included. So we're gonna give a little bit of our uh, you know, thoughts and feedback on that type of thing. And just like anything else, gentlemen uh, and ladies, I'm not influenced, uh, there's no like, you know, there's not like they pay me to make a good review or anything like that. Every review that I do is pretty much ammunition provided to make something or something like that. And I just, you know, say what I like to say. There's nothing uh, where I have to be nice or be mean or anything like that. So just so we're clear. So talking about this particular AR-15, everybody when they see an AR-15, they're like an AR-15, you know, an AR-15 is an AR-15. There's no differences. Well, there is, there's a whole lot of differences. The AR-15 has evolved quite a bit as a platform and depending on what you do and what you need, you can configure an AR-15 to do a whole lot of different things. It is a wonderful weapon system. I know that's a buzzword. I hate that word. It's a wonderful rifle. And because of that, we're going to talk about what makes the Sons of Liberty Gunworks uh, particular builds so good and why you might want to get your hands on them, why they may or may not work, why you might choose something else. So to start off with, let's talk about the barrel. The barrel is the heart of the weapon, and a good barrel can make or break a rifle. Uh, with everything that goes along with it. So these barrels are made from 4150 chrome moly vanadium. Uh, that is an excellent, excellent uh, barrel steel, and I was very happy with them using that choice. Now, as far as accuracy is concerned, uh, this rifle is more accurate than I am, just like anything else out there. There's very few things where like, I shoot it, I'm like, wow, this is inaccurate. Uh, hell, a high point is probably more accurate than you are. Uh, we're all just really terrible shots. So. With this, with match ammo, I'm pulling out the typical, you know, 1 to 1 1.5 MOA at 100, which is pretty standard with good ammunition and a good optic, and I'm sure it could do better bench rested and with even better ammunition. So it is wholly accurate for what it's designed to do. It is very much so an AR-15 in its accuracy. Um, it's definitely on the level of BCM and Colt when it comes to their accuracy. They're kind of a good benchmark to go off of. So barrel is excellent. Moving up from the barrel, I want to talk briefly about the muzzle device. So the muzzle device is kind of interesting to me. It's made to mount a dead air Sandman of some type. That's a mounting system used. But beyond that, they kind of marry two concepts, a compensator and a flash hider. So if you've used the War Comp, you know that Surefire's done that okay. Um, I would consider this a better execution. It seems to do a much better uh, job of staying on target as opposed to the War Comp, which I think at times does overcompensate and drive your rifle down or to the side, depending on how you have it timed. Um, they kind of described this to me as a B.E. Myers flash hider, you know, melded with a uh, with a comp. And I definitely can see that, and it definitely does work very well. So this is their, I believe it's called the Knox muzzle device. It's well made. It's like a $60 upgrade when you're buying this rifle. So this rifle at base price is around $1,300. And I've kept everything pretty much stock. That way you can kind of see what it would look like at exactly that $1,300 price point. So... Muzzle device, excellent, uh, it helps out quite a bit. The gas system is a mid-length for the 16-inch barrel. Obviously, if you go shorter, you're gonna get a shorter gas, um, you know, gas system, and that's normal. So, it is properly gas, which is a big deal. A lot of companies like Daniel Defense and a couple others tend to over-gas their rifles so that they work with a wide variety of ammunition. And that's fine, but the problem is, is when you're using military-type ammunition or full-powered ammunition, um, you have way too much gas going to the system, which leads to parts wear and which leads to excessive recoil. So I do appreciate the fact when companies like BCM and Sons of Liberty Gunworks have a well-gassed system, um, because I think most people are using uh, ammunition that pretty much works. You know, Wolf Gold or uh, 
you know, Federal or Winchester M855, uh, M193, they're all full powered ammunition and they're gonna run these rifles wonderfully. And I hate, you know, when I'm using a rifle like a DD, Daniel's Defense, and uh, I'm just getting, you know, whole huge amounts of gas in my face. It's just awful. So anyhow, uh, the gas blocks themselves can be pinned. If you want that to be an option, they do pin a Volter gas block, and those are excellent. And while we're here, let's talk about the rail. So the rail is, um, it's good. It's an M-lock rail. They have the primary mounting positions at the, at the standard 12 and the 3 and the 6 and the 9. And they do have further mounting portions up at the top corners right here, what you call, you know, whatever you want to call it, like 11 o'clock position approximately on both sides. So, you know, I understand why they did that because on something like a BCM MCMR with their rail, you'll see that there are mounting solutions on all sides right here. And they did that so you can, you know, do everything to your heart's desire. But how often are people mounting things at odd angles all the way back there? So I, under, I do understand why they did that. I, I still like the option of doing it. Um, one thing to note about the Sons of Liberty Gunworks rail is that it's very well built. It's a little bit heavier than the BCM rail. Not to say that, the B, that this rail is heavy at all because it's very lightweight. It's just that the BCM rail is so excessively light. It is also a little bit thicker. So if you like that thicker grip, um, go with the Sons of Liberty Gunworks. The BCM is exceedingly thin. Um, I do personally prefer the BCM MCMR over the Sons of Liberty Gunworks rail. That being said, uh, it's a very close tie and this is an excellent rail. So if you have this, don't feel like you're getting duped because I do believe that this is also a stronger rail than the BCM um, just due to the amount of weight and the thickness of the material. So let that be noted there. And also, BCMs are plenty strong. Uh, they're used in country, in Africa, and all over that kind of stuff. So BCMs are fine, but this is a strong, it's a good rail, so don't feel bad about that. What's nice about the, these rifles is that they do come with iron sights standard. You can pick whatever iron sights you want. Uh, one of the things about the Sons of Liberty Gunworks rifles is that you can do whatever you want on it. You can configure anything. So. In this case, the rifle was sent to me with uh, the Magpul and bus sights, which I find them to be uh, very much so inadequate. I'm not a big fan of these iron sights. I, I wouldn't even call them iron sights, I call them plastic sights. But um, you have plenty of other options. Uh, you can even remove the iron sights and add that credit towards an optic of some type. And they have a variety of different optics. You can get anything from like a Sig Romeo all the way up to like, you know, EOTAX and even higher. So. There are plenty of good optic options, and that's kind of nice that they just kind of do that all for you in factory if you're kind of a busy guy or if you want to buy everything at once. Okay, moving back from the rail, let's talk about the receiver sets. So, um, a lot of companies use MIM on their lowers. So, Sons of Liberty Gunworks does not do that. They actually cast all their lowers. I know a lot of people are like really big into forge, like everything be, you know, from a solid block of metal, just be shaved down. Um, I don't think it matters much, but between MIM and actual casting, uh, casting is superior, so they do cast their um, their lowers unlike some companies, and they do a great job of it. Okay, talking about the upper receiver, before we kind of get down to the bottom here, bottom's important, um, <laughs> is uh, the charging handle. So, when you select a charging handle, the standard charging handle that it comes with is the Radian Raptor LT. So the LT is the lightened version, and it has plastic wings as opposed to, or polymer wings, whatever you call them, as opposed to the metal wings. Um, I think uh, when it comes to charging handles that the Radian Raptor is perhaps the best charging handle out there on the market, and the LT is no exception. So I was really happy to see that that was one of the first options. If you want any other charging handle, you can get them. But honestly, the Radian LT is just a super, just a wonderfully made uh, charging handle. So I'm happy that with their addition there. They actually do a really good job with their BCGs. So their bullet carrier groups are individually HP proofed and also magnetic particle inspected as opposed to batch inspected. So, you know, when it comes to this company, they are very, very particular about making sure that everything is done right. And there's a lot of QC that goes through. So a lot of people, you know, companies can make a really good gun, but QC can kind of be a little bit spotty. I've even had Colt lowers that have some QC issues. So I've heard nothing but good things from a lot of my friends and a lot of people who have owned these particular rifles because their QC is just very well done. And that's um, something that is very important for a company that is marketing to a primarily kind of professional type use end user. So, um, you know, good on them on that. There... <clears throat> They're also using five coil XP springs for the extractor. Um, 
extractor springs matter. And so that actually doesn't necess necessitate the use of gas rings. So their rifles are wholly reliable, when, especially when it comes to their extractor springs. So good of them for using that. Moving back from there, uh, when it comes to your selector switch and your bolt catch, um, those can all be changed out to whatever you want. So in this case, I've kept it standard uh, to keep it to that $1,300 price mark. Um, you can add anything, the radian, the radian selector or whatever you want. I prefer the radian on most of my rifles. Uh, bolt catch, uh, bolt release, whatever you want to call it, is, um, and when it comes to the bolt release, you can add whatever you want. I just kept it standard. That's what I use on most of my rifles. Okay, grip is Magpul Mo. Those are fine. I prefer a little bit steeper of a grip, but you can easily change that out, and it is wholly adequate. Okay, trigger. So let's talk trigger here. So the trigger is their Liberty Fighting Trigger. So it's pretty much a smoothed out mil spec trigger. And you know, mil spec AR triggers are actually pretty nice. So there's something to be said about those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and ghost this like we always do. And you guys are super excited. So you're gonna go ahead and put your finger under mine. We're gonna go ahead and do this together. So first off, um, switching over to fire. Very little take up. Oh, barely any take up. Maybe a millimeter. Hit that wall. Very crisp let off at around seven or so pounds, perhaps a little bit more. Perfect. Okay, let's check the reset. The reset is how far I have to let the trigger forward before I can pull that trigger again. So let's go ahead and try that out. Perfect. Just like a mil spec trigger, a nice little bit of let off, and then it springs forward. Crisp let off, seven pounds. So that feels pretty good. So let's compare that to a mil spec Colt lower. So we got a mil spec Colt lower with a BCM upper. Let's go ahead and feel that. So let's flip it up, make sure it's on fire. Okay. Okay. This is from Colt. Check in the reset. The Colt trigger, to be honest, does feel a little bit better to me, a little bit lighter, a little bit crisper. Um, Colt makes some very good triggers. So it's nothing against um, Sons of Liberty Gunworks, but to be honest, I actually do find the Colt trigger to be a little bit lighter and crisper. It definitely has a little bit of creep compared to the let off on the Sons of Liberty Gunworks trigger. So I can kind of see this going either way. Both are excellent. Um, the trigger from Sons of Liberty Gunworks is just standard, so you don't have to pay for it, and I think it's a very good trigger. Um, I think it's kind of an app. I think it's kind of depends on what you're what you prefer. I kind of prefer the Colt trigger a little bit more, but this one is definitely adequate and definitely excellent. And um, limitation is definitely you when it comes to this. Guys like Millspec Mojo run these triggers like you know crazy. So good trigger. Okay, the buffer system. So they don't use carbine. They usually use H is uh, like the lightest they go, which is perfect for what they're doing as far as their gassing and everything. They are using Springco springs in the. In the action system, if you're not familiar with Springco, they are perhaps the best springs for your AR-15. So them using those springs shows that they've done their research and they know what they're doing. Those are quality parts right there. If you want, you can also upgrade to the Volter A5 system. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I've used the Volter A5 system previously and I've been a big fan of it, and I am. It definitely helps. It's basically a rifle length spring on a you know adjustable tube. So it helps slow down the bolt over a greater length of time and it makes for a gentler recoil impulse. Um, I don't use them quite as much anymore. And the only reason for that is that I prefer to um, practice with more, I guess, mil spec parts. That way I don't get too comfortable with a gun uh, being so soft and recoil that when I go to like a normal M4, I feel like that thing's kicking too much. So I've kind of gone back to more stock a lot of my parts, just as a quick note to you guys, but the Volter A5 system is phenomenal. The stock is whatever you want it to be. This one is a Magpul stock, which is fine. I don't prefer Magpul stocks personally, but they, they work very well. So how does it feel when it shoots? So putting everything together, uh, it feels very nice. It feels like um, very much so similar to a BCM, which it should be. It's right around the same price range. Uh, it has about the same recoil impulse, very well gassed, easy to keep on target. It, at this point, it kind of comes down to what you want. Um, you know, BCM, do you want that type of rail? Do you want that type of barrel? You know, is that what you're looking for? Or do you want like a, something like the Sons of Liberty Gunworks where you have kind of a thicker rail and a couple other things that go along with it? I think it comes down to, to this, guys. If you're a professional end user um, or if you're worried about warranties, and both companies have excellent warranties, they will back their product a thousand percent. 
Um, Sons of Liberty Gunworks has a really cool warranty. It can't be voided. Uh, it can be transferred, whatever. They'll replace it if your like, house burns down. And they definitely cater uh, to the LE market. So if your rifle in the you know course of duty gets destroyed or damaged, they will replace your rifle. And that goes for barrels as well. Just any parts, not even LE related, they will replace anything. Everything when it comes to Sons of Liberty Gunworks rifles are warrantied and they will replace them. If you shoot out a barrel, they will replace it because you shoot it so much. And that's pretty cool. I like that I like that they do that. That's actually pretty abnormal to me. So anyhow, if your law enforcement gets damaged in line of duty, they're gonna replace it. Um, and if you are a law enforcement officer and you're involved in a shooting and your rifle is taken as evidence, um, they will replace your rifle during that duration of your rifle being evidence so that you have something to just have. So I think that they do a really cool job about doing that. So they have a really good warranty, much like any other company out there. Um, I think that they are kind of set themselves apart by having one that can't be voided. That's pretty cool. So when it comes to Sons of Liberty Gunworks rifle, it definitely caters more to the professional kind of LE market. And that's kind of, I think, what they're going for. Besides of that, they have just excellent quality control. And because of that, they take a rifle that could be you know, just good, like a BCM, and they make it really excellent. So I've been very impressed with these types of rifles. If you're law enforcement and you're looking for something, this is a really good choice, along with BCM, along with Colt. Um, take a look at them. They're not too expensive, and a whole rifle is going to net you right around uh, 1300 which is a pretty good price point. Uh, you might not want this if you are wanting a thinner rail, uh, like the BCM. Just realize you're going to sacrifice a little bit of strength when it comes to that. That being said, I don't think you can go wrong with this. I think it comes down to personal preference and taste. So get out there, shoot the rifle, figure out what's going to work for you. And no matter what, these rifles aren't going to work for you if you're not training. So get training, guys. If you're not training, none of this is going to matter because you're still going to suck with your rifle. So there are a couple places you can get training that I recommend right off the top of my head. Um, we have Cogworks, Bear Solutions, uh, my dad's company, Travis Haley, with Haley Strategic. We have Esoteric and Darcy. All great companies. Um, there are tons of great guys out there, just like individual instructors like Tony Cowden and others. Just guys who are really pushing the limit and doing great things. Get out there and train with these guys. Get that knowledge and make yourself a better shooter. Get yourself more educated. That's what's going to matter. Because the equipment, yeah, you need equipment that's reliable, but again, it's a man. If you can't shoot, then the rifle's going to do nothing for you. Guys, thank you for watching. We have tons of great things coming. I appreciate you guys. And as always, stay looking cool by getting training. Okay, I've got nothing else. Okay, last note for you guys. Wear your eye protection. So protect your eyes. You only have two of them. Uh, we can't regrow them quite yet. Well, we can. But the point is, keep your... Keep, protect your eyes, guys. All you have to do is put on some safety glasses. I use Oakley's. Um, I don't mean this to sound like an advertisement, but they have the least amount of diffraction when it comes to like looking, because when you're looking through glass, you're looking through glass of an optic, and I like you know, the glass quality to be good. You don't have to do Oakley's. It's just what I typically recommend. Anything works. Just protect your eyes, guys. Um, if you've gotten this far, you know that we're going to talk about Big Daddy Unlimited. It's a subscription service. It's like Costco, but in the gun world, and you subscribe. And if you don't buy enough things from Costco, then the, your membership's not worth it. Just like if you subscribe to Big Daddy Unlimited, which is a super unfortunate website name, then you're not going to get all you want out of that website. So figure out if it's for you. They have great deals in there. And check it out. Guys, if you've gotten this far, I want you to comment with your favorite Star Wars minor character. None of the ma major characters. Mine is, ooh, I would say Wedge is almost a major character. Oh, that's a hard one. I still want to stick with Wedge. Wedge Antilles for sure. <laughs> Name yours. Thank you guys. Take care.